Hi and welcome to this video in which I'm going to attempt to recreate the classic Vangelis brass sound from Blade Runner using only two freeware plugins. The original sound was created on the mighty Yamaha CS80. Plus of course the reverb used played a massive part in the sound, giving an epic scale and grandeur to the soundtrack. An original Yamaha CS80 is well out of the reach of almost all musicians and requires servicing and maintenance to maintain its now elderly electronics. So the fact that you can even get close to the sound of a CS80 with free software is pretty amazing. Today there are quite a few VSTs that are capable of recreating the CS80 sound and most virtual analog emulations can get pretty close. One of my favourite VSTs is the Memory Moon ME80, which has been designed to closely mimic the CS80. The ME80 is reasonably priced and I can highly recommend it if you're looking for a VST that captures the sound and the spirit of the CS80. Plus, it's MPE compatible, so it can be set up in a similar way to the original CS80 to respond to polyphonic aftertouch. However, the challenge is to use a freeware VST so I won't be using the ME80 in this video, but I will use it to illustrate what I think is an important component of that particular sound. If you look at the filter envelope, you'll see that it differs from the now conventional ADSR envelope by offering an attack level control, as well as an initial level control. To illustrate this, let's have a look at a contemporary ADSR in Serum. When you adjust the attack, and the decay, and the release, you are entering time values. But as you adjust the sustain, you'll see that you're actually reducing the levels and it's displayed here in decibels. The thing to notice is that in such an envelope, the attack phase will always be at a level of 100%. And the release phase will always fade down to zero. To get a finer degree of control over the attack and release stages, Serum allows you to adjust the curve, which is beneficial for certain sounds. If we look at the envelope of the excellent Rapid VST, we can see visually that in Rapid, you can control the level of the attack stage as well as its slope or curve. The effect of this on a filter is that slow attack levels make for a gradual ramp in for long, languid filter openings. So, back to the ME80 to hear the effect of this. So if I set the initial level to minus five, you'll hear that there is almost like a delay to the start of the sound. And if I set the attack level to high, it'll emphasize it even more. So somewhere about there is just about right. So hopefully I've illustrated the almost unique nature of the envelopes on a CS80. But what freeware synth am I going to use to mimic the analog super synth? Well, the instrument I've gone for is Dext, an accurate emulation of the Yamaha DX7 and available entirely for free. Now this may seem like a strange choice, as synths don't come much more digital than a DX7, with no filter and no sawtooth waveforms that were used in the original CS80. But there's one reason for choosing it, and that is the attack, decay, sustain and release stages of each envelope each have their own levels. Now a huge part of the original sound, as I mentioned earlier, is reverb. And for a free verb, there really is only one choice for me, and that's Valhalla Supermassive. If you're not familiar with FM synthesis, the look of Dext may seem like a bewildering array of knobs and controls, but don't be put off because once you know the basics, you can create your own sounds easily or tweak the thousands of presets you can download over the internet. At its heart, FM synthesis or phase distortion involves modulating one waveform by another. The DX7 had six sine wave waveforms called operators that could be configured differently using 32 different algorithms. 
And if that sounds like gobbledygook, I'm only going to use two sine waves to generate the sound and show you how simple it can be. So let's get started and initialize Dext. The first thing I need to do is select an algorithm as I'm only using two operators. But to get close to the timbre I'm trying to create, I'd like feedback on one of those operators. So if I switch from, uh, from algorithm one to algorithm two, you'll see that here, operator one and two give me that option of just using the two operators and with feedback on operator two. So what I'm going to do straight away is dial up the feedback to full for operator two. But at the moment, we can only hear operator one. The initialized voice uh, disables operator two. So we hear the sine wave. So the first thing to do is to set up uh, the envelope to give us a close approximation of the sound that we're trying to achieve. So if we look at the envelopes, you'll see the default levels are as expected, full for attack, decay, and sustain, but release uh, as a value of zero. Indeed, if you turn that up and hit a note, you'll find you get infinite sustain. So I'll turn that down. You'd only really use that for effects like, say, wind effects and wave effects. Now, the most important thing to realize about the rate settings of the envelopes is that to many synthesis, they initially seem the wrong way around. So beware of that. Now, the best way to think of it is that uh, if you're adjusting the rate, 100% is equivalent to an instant on. And as you lower that, so you're lowering the rate at which the attack time happens. So the same applies to release. If I turn the knob to the left, you'll see that I'm actually increasing the release time. So that's the best way I can think of to, uh, to help you visualize that, but do be aware of that. So keeping that in mind, let's adjust operator one's envelope by ear. That gets us reasonably close. Now to hear the effects of FM, if I increase the level of operator two, that will modulate the frequency of operator one, and you'll hear the sort of classic FM effect if I bring this in. So we're adjusting the timbre of the sound now by introducing operator two. Now by changing the frequency, you can get various different uh, timbres, so you can get bell tones quite easily. And if you dial in... Uh, if you dial in ratios that aren't, uh, say, 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, etc., you will get those uh, extra harmonics that make it so good for bell tones, um, piano tones, etc. So if I adjust the level of operator 2 to give me the sort of timbre that I'm looking for, if I take it all the way, uh, it'll break up and you'll get a sort of a white noise effect. So I want it just before it breaks up. roughly there. And uh, you can still hear, because of the decay time, you can still hear the carrier wave, which is operator number one. So I need to adjust now the envelope of operator two. So we're getting reasonably close now. I'll just uh, tweak them both to give me the sort of sound I'm looking for. So before I go ahead and edit the envelope generator levels, let's uh, just put supermassive on the sort of uh, reverb sound we're looking for. Let's go for a really massive reverb. Let's go for We Are Stardust. And I'm going to uh, take the mix down to roughly, well, quite high. 45, take the feedback down. Oh, another thing I can do to introduce a slight uh, detune, I'll just set the tuning on this one to uh, say plus four. And I'll take the uh, course tuning down to 0.5, which will actually take us down an octave. 
and we're getting that sort of rich sound. We're getting in the ballpark now. So what I'll do is adjust the levels now of the first envelope. And the ones that concern us really are the uh, the attack time. Now this, this is just to soften the, the initial attack. So about there, and we'll reduce the level of the sustain phase. And now this is where the sound sort of really snaps into gear is setting the EG level of uh, operator two. So again, I'll reduce the sustain level, but it's in the attack phase where it really, uh, really comes to life and we need to take this down. Now we're getting that. So what I can do now is uh, set up, say, for example, velocity to open and close the filter to, to give us sort of soft to uh, more open filter. Of course, we're not opening a filter. We're actually <laughs> adjusting the um, operator two to change the timbre of the sound itself. but we're simulating opening a filter using key velocity. You can do the same thing with, uh, if we do it on operator one, we'll be doing the same thing with uh, volume. So I'll just do that for a smaller amount. On a harder level, will give us the sort of timbre we're looking for. Now, if you want to uh, dial it back and go for a softer sound, you can just reduce the level. But round about that position there, to me is about right. I'll take the mix up even higher. I won't play it correctly because that uh, could get me uh, a copyright strike. So I hope this video showed just what can be achieved with freeware synths and effects and helped reduce some of the fear factor if you're new to FM synthesis. If you found the video helpful or interesting, please do give it a thumbs up as this really helps me to make new videos for YouTube. So until the next video, thanks for watching.